the brochure and the budget overview. We will prompt you to refer to the brochure to grab our presentation, and an overview of our plan is found on pages three and four, and a bibliography is found at the end of each section. The budget overview will be addressed last. All right, hi, I'm Audrey, and we are Green Earth Tech. We get you. You, the Johnson family, hired us to consult your agricultural practices and implement new technologies and existing BNPs onto your property. Emerson Farm is located in Essex County and is bordered by the Rappahannock River. It is 365 acres total with 220 acres for agricultural use. We would like to applaud you for wanting to include more ecologically conscious practices on your farm and at GET, your priorities are our priorities. We understand that agriculture is a business operation, a family endeavor, and cultivated by a passion to connect with the local community and feed the world. National Geographic estimated that to feed the growing population, we must double our crop yields by 2050, and you are part of the solution. Our plan is laid out in three stages. In stage one, just getting basic agricultural practices in order, and in stages two and three, implementing new technologies to increase efficiency and decrease labor costs. Anna will now address stage one. Before implementing any new technologies on your property, we recommend perfecting your basic agricultural practices since this will aid in an easier implementation of precision agriculture later on in our future stages. To start, we sectioned your farm into four relatively equal sized areas. Pictured here is our recommended rotation plan. It's a four year rotation plan, and the idea is that each of those four sections will start on one of these four years, so that only one field is fallow per year. We stuck with your current crops of soy, corn, and wheat, but we also recommend fallowing every third year of the rotation with a cover crop of mustard since it's both inexpensive and effective at reducing erosion. This rotation plan maximizes the sustainable use of your property, but first soil health must be assessed. Lisa. Before implementing any further practices on your farm, we recommend that you begin with completing land evaluation tests. First, soil testing can give an accurate look at areas of concern and the amount of nutrients needed to fix them. One way of doing this is grid sampling, where a field is divided into multiple plots, and a soil sample is taken from each plot. This more accurately describes the quality of soil across every field, so specific alterations can be made. We also suggest the creation of a nutrient management plan. This plan evaluates the ratio of NPK, or nitrogen to phosphorus to potassium, that can be adjusted to improve uh, soil quality and ensure higher crop yields, a, t a template of which is found on page 8 of your brochure. We also suggest the use of drones for site evaluation. Drone companies like Precision Hawk have machines that can evaluate your property through the use of aerial imaging and the use of different apps and systems for finding soil content or low yield areas with just the push of a button. We get it. So not only are these essential drones easy to use for the average farmer, but they also come at low costs. After land evaluation, we suggest using many soil BMPs, or best management practices, such as no-till <laughs> agriculture. This is the process of not tilling fields after a harvest and leaving crop residue behind. Reducing this tillage allows the soil to remain undisturbed and helps to maintain the soil structure and increase tilt, which facilitates water infiltration and aeration within the soil. As Anna mentioned earlier, cover crops like mustard are also recommended to reduce erosion and nutrient depletion in your land. All these BMPs mentioned are also enforced by the Erosion and Sediment Control Ordinance of Essex County, which is detailed on page 9 of your brochure. Now, Rachel will discuss our first conservation measures. Thanks, Lisa. Because of your stream on Field 2, as well as the extensive wetland coverage on the edges of your fields, we would like to suggest adding a riparian buffer of native plants and shrubs to the edges of these areas. Not only does a riparian buffer help to provide habitat for a variety of organisms, but it also has a variety of benefits, including preventing erosion and filtering sediment and runoff. Wetlands, too, are very important ecosystems that host similar benefits, including flood control and filtering runoff. And by working with the Fish and Wildlife Service, as well as the North American Wetlands Conservation Act, you can get up to $125 in grants per acre to preserve these areas. During stage 
one, we also like to suggest using online technology, including creating a website and becoming more active on social media. Websites are much more user-friendly than in the past, with programs such as WordPress and Wix that have online templates and tips. In addition, they're very inexpensive at only $10 for the upkeep of a domain. Social media, too, is a free and easy way to get the word out about your property, with programs like the NRCS Fridays on a Farm that help you to connect with other farmers and advertise the quality of your products. We'd also like to suggest using blockchain software. Blockchaining is a digital way to track transactions, meaning a customer can scan a product on their phone and be able to track it back to the retailer, distributor, and even back to the farmer, meaning they'll be led directly to your website. Blockchaining is also a great way to streamline your transaction processes to one online location and to attract new businesses and investors, and as well as connect with other farmers and create long-distance co-ops as well as long-distance business applications. As we move into stage two, Joseph will talk about ways to improve your yield. This is the beginning of stage two. Please follow along on page 11 of your brochure. According to a study published by Purdue University, up to half your yields can be impacted during the initial planting. Seeding at uneven depths causes some plants to emerge later than others, leading to yield losses. The precision planting delta force helps fix this problem by applying a downward force during the initial planting so that all seeds are planted at the same depth and will emerge at the same time. In addition, there is a specific window of time for planting for maximum yields. The precision planting speed tip allows for double the traditional seeding speed so that this window can be achieved more easily even with unexpected weather conditions slowing you down. Finally, the precision planting conceal can be used to apply strips of fertilizer within the soil so that it does not run off the farm, but it is accessible to the plants during the most important stages of the plant's growth when the maximum yields are being determined. Now, the cost of these technologies may not outweigh the benefits for implementing it on your farm alone. This is why we recommend starting or joining a local equipment sharing cooperative. Through the co-op, costs of buying and maintaining technology are shared among multiple farmers so that there is less financial burden on your farm while you still enjoy all the benefits. Now, Rachel will explain how water conservation can be achieved through technology. Water is expensive, and proper water and irrigation techniques can have a significant impact on your profits over time. We get that. Therefore, we suggest installing a ramp pump as a way to mitigate these costs. A ramp pump uses no electricity and has no cumulative cost to run. Instead, it uses the downward motion of water in order to redirect that force upwards. And using a ramp pump, you'll be able to water virtually any area on the four areas that we listed earlier. We'd also like to talk about the poli um, political aspects of your farm. We want to make sure that your farm is thriving not only sustainably and economically, and also politically. Not only does this mean complying with local ordinances and state and federal laws, but also working with the agencies from all three of these government levels. And many of these come in the form of grants. Stage two is a great time to reassess which grants you may be eligible for. For a full list of our political endeavors, please see page four of your brochure. Audrey? Thanks, Rachel. Improving habitats on your property can be extremely beneficial, and your farm has so much to offer in terms of nature. By improving habitats, you benefit the agro-ecosystem, which is how your agricultural practices interact with the local environment. One of your stated goals <coughs> is to bring back the bobwhite quail, and by creating a soft edge on the borders of fields that lie on the edges of forests, you can create cubby headquarters, which provide cover for predators and brood-rearing areas for the bobwhite quail. In these same places, we also recommend planting sunflowers. The sunflowers will attract other songbirds and morning doves. And technical assistance for these habitat improvements can come from the Virginia Quail Recovery Initiative, which is sponsored by the Virginia Department of Game and Inland Fisheries. For a full overview of wildlife management in Stage 2, refer to pages 12 and 13. All of these wildlife are used in our Integrated Pest Management System, or IPM, which is a way to use a multifaceted approach to control pests more efficiently and through more natural, um, more natural processes. Biological controls, like the, like the birds and the bobwhite quail, will eat insects, and the bobwhite quail's pecking behavior will perforate the soil, which will increase aeration. 
cultural controls like crop rotation and using mustard as a cover crop will reduce um, weed problems on your farm as mustard is a natural biohumigant. Pollination is imperative on any agricultural operation <coughs> and by creating a wildflower garden to beautify the area that is a cemetery, you can not only plant beautiful native wildflowers, but you can also attract and benefit pollinators like the rusty patch bumblebee and the monarch butterfly. A study published in American Entomology estimated that the value of agricultural pollination is worth 143 times more than any of the wax or honey that the European honeybee produces. It is well worth the investment to improve habitats on your property. Joseph? Starting in stage three, which begins on page 14 of your brochure, we recommend implementing precision agriculture, which is a method of farm management that uses information technologies to decrease inputs while increasing production. The USDA Economic Research Service estimates average cost savings of $20 per acre for implementing it. In precision agriculture, your farm is divided into smaller management zones of similar productivity, the historic yield data, or the soil testing that Lisa mentioned earlier. These management zones are then used to calculate input requirements, and variable rate application, or VRA, is then used to apply only what is needed. Using VRA also qualifies you for USDA's Precision Farming Incentive, which can give you an additional $20 per acre. Using GPS and GIS navigation systems, such as real-time kinematics, allow you to go through your farm and apply your inputs exactly where you want them to eliminate over-application. Using planning monitors and yield monitoring technology will allow you to report your yields as you go through your farm to use in future input requirements, as well as verify that everything is running properly. Now, Lisa will discuss community outreach. At GET, we believe that education is an important way to interact with the community and the younger generation about agricultural innovations and conservation <coughs> practices. One way to start is by working with many of local schools and colleges within the area. Rappahannock Community College is just around the corner from your farm, and environmental science majors can act as interns to help with the various technological practices that we implement, as well as gaining real-world experiences for their future careers. Also, Chesapeake Bay Governor's School has a large focus on environmental science and agriculture, so high school students can come on field trips to learn about establishing a sustainable farm with the use of technology. As Audrey mentioned earlier, with the growing population, food production needs to increase, especially in a local setting. This is why with your crops, we recommend that you establish regional connections for product distribution, such as local plants and factories, and extending the blockchain and technology that Rachel mentioned earlier. This will inform the community about your sustainable practices, and selling your products more locally will also allow you to apply for the USDA's Local Food Promotion Grant Program that promotes regionally produced agricultural products. As an additional practice, we also suggest working with many local scout troops in the area and allowing them to complete service opportunities on your property. Now, Rachel will discuss our Stage 3 conservation practices. Thanks, Lisa. During Stage 3, we would like to suggest installing a denitrifying bioreactor. A bioreactor is a trench filled with organic materials such as wood chips or plant matter and built at an area of low elevation on the edge of the field. Runoff flows into the reactor where microorganisms break down nutrients such as nitrogen and phosphorus before it can make its ways into local streams and waterways and will improve the water quality of your area. We'd also like to suggest using a saturated riparian buffer. This technology not only helps to improve the water quality of your area, but will also help to improve your crop yields according to studies by the USDA. This technology includes underground piping along the edges of a field and an outlet that can be raised or lowered. This outlet is able to block the water flow into your local waterways. And by being able to control this, you will also be able to control the amount of water and water-soluble nutrients inside your fields. This is important because you're able to drain the field or keep your field wet in the time that your plants may need it most. Audrey? Thanks, Rachel. As the improved habitat and human maintenance stage, we suggest opening these up to the public and creating wildlife viewing areas. For an overview of how this would work on your property, refer to pages 16 and 17 of your brochure. Visitors can expect to bird watch and see bobwhite quail and other songbirds, and while exploring the beautiful flora in the wildflower garden, they are likely to see charismatic pollinators like bumblebees and butterflies. 
Um, a, a study from the University of Regina in Canada concluded that conducting a community with a local ecosystem not only improved local health and well-being, but also created an enthusiasm for conservation. As we mentioned earlier, pollination is imperative on any agricultural operation, and to increase pollination in the coming decade, we also recommend adding apiaries. But beekeeping requires a lot of labor. An alternative is to rent land to local beekeepers so you don't have to increase your labor, but you can still reap the benefits of the European honeybee. You might be overwhelmed by the um, conservation practices and new technologies that we suggest implementing on your farm. But I get a, per a priority of ours is to have a balanced budget, which Anna will now discuss. We understand that all of the technologies and practices we're recommending might not be economically feasible for the average farmer on their own. Therefore, we recommend a co-op that Joseph mentioned earlier, as well as applying for multiple grants, some of which my colleagues have mentioned throughout their presentation. A full list of these grants can be found on the first page of the separate budget overview. Overall, most of your costs will be mitigated by the grants and the co-op, and a budget breakdown can also be found on page two of that same budget overview. These are the three main grant programs we recommend applying for. The Conservation Reserve Enhancement Program, or CREP, will reimburse you up to 50% of the cost for repairing and restoring the riparian buffer that Rachel mentioned earlier, and will pay you an annual rental rate per square foot of designated CREP area. The Environmental Quality Incentives Program, or EQIP, will give you the financial and technical assistance needed for the <coughs> practices that we're recommending for your farm. Finally, the Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education Grants will give you the funding needed for the community outreach education and research initiatives that Lisa mentioned earlier. One of your main goals was to decrease your labor inputs with the increased use of technology. We conducted a labor analysis of your current farm and found that right now your labor inputs are equivalent to about $70,000. However, as you can see on this graph, which tracks the labor costs over our three stages, with the increased use of technology, your labor costs will decrease drastically, eventually decreasing by about 60 to 70 percent by the end of stage three. While your labor costs are decreasing, your profits are increasing. This increase comes from a, de a less nutrient waste, less resource waste, and less crop loss that all come from precision agriculture and increased use of technology. By the end of stage three, we project that your profits will have increased by about 15 to 20 percent. Now Joseph will conclude our presentation. Looking forward, we expect you to have the financial ability to implement more ambitious technologies and projects, such as automation or even experimental technologies. As Audrey mentioned earlier, it is necessary to double your food production to feed the growing population, and our plan will help you achieve this goal. We have provided you with both the knowledge and technology needed to feed the world. Thank you, and we will now answer any questions. Judges, you have five minutes. The bow reactor. Bye. Bye.